Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we will be discussing the concepts of intramolecular and intermolecular forces. As the name suggests, intramolecular forces form within a molecule, while intermolecular forces form between molecules. Furthermore, intramolecular forces are much stronger than intermolecular forces as they are chemical bonds while the latter are attractive forces. Some examples of intramolecular forces are ionic bonds, covalent bonds, metallic bonds, polar covalent bonds, London dispersion forces, dipole-dipole interactions, and hydrogen bonds are some examples of intermolecular forces. Now let's go through these forces separately. Ionic bonds form between a cation and an anion. These atoms have an electronegativity difference of more than 1.7 as indicated by the Pauling scale shown below. You can normally identify these bonds by observing if the compound is made up of a metal and a nonmetal. Consider sodium chloride as an example. The Na plus cation from the sodium metal and chlorine minus anion from chlorine, nonmetal, have ionic bonds between them. As seen here, ionic bonds form through an electron transfer from the atom with the low ionization, i.e. the metal, to the atom with high electron affinity, i.e. the nonmetal. Importantly, Compounds formed through ionic bonds typically display distinct physical properties such as high melting and boiling points, dissolution in polar solvents, formation of lattice structures in nature, and the good conduction of electricity in molten or aqueous forms. Covalent bonds, on the other hand, form between atoms with an electronegativity difference less than 1.7. Thus, they are typically formed between nonmetals. For example, chlorine molecules are formed through covalent bonds. As you can see, the formation of these bonds are facilitated through the sharing of electrons. What's important to note here is that covalent bonds can be further categorized into polar covalent bonds and nonpolar covalent bonds. And this categorization is based on the electronegativity difference between the two atoms and the way in which the electrons are shared. Nonpolar covalent bonds refers to bonds in which the electrons are shared equally, like with the previous example of chlorine molecules. In the chlorine molecule, the electronegativity difference is zero, and therefore this is considered nonpolar covalent bonds. Polar covalent bonds have an unequal sharing of electrons, and the electronegativity difference between the atoms is between 0.4 and 1.7 on the Pauling scale. For example, carbon dioxide has an electronegativity difference of 1. Since oxygen has an electronegativity value of 3.5 and carbon has an electronegativity value of 2.5, the electrons are unequally shared between the atoms, with the electrons being more closely associated with oxygen. Similar to ionic bonds, covalent compounds have distinct physical properties, namely low melting and boiling points, dissolution in nonpolar solvents, and the poor conduction of electricity in aqueous or molten forms. Additionally, due to the sharing of electrons in covalent bonds, Covalent compounds can form multiple bonds to fill the valence shell. An example of this is carbon. As you can see, as the bond order increases, the bond length decreases, and the bond strength increases. When it comes to intermolecular forces, London dispersion forces, also known as the Van der Waal forces, are the weakest. These forces form between all molecules, and they form through the rapid polarization and counter-induced polarization of electron clouds of nearby atoms. These forces are the short-lived induced dipoles. Larger the molecule, greater the London dispersion force. Next is dipole-dipole interactions. These intermolecular forces form between polar molecules those that already have dipole moments, 
An example of this is the HCl molecule shown below. Here, the hydrogen already has a partial positive charge and the chlorine has a partial negative charge. As the dipole-dipole interaction forms between the chlorine of one molecule and the hydrogen of the other. Polar molecules tend to have higher melting and boiling points due to these interactions. Now hydrogen bonds are a special case. You can think of it as being a stronger form of dipole-dipole interactions. In hydrogen bonds, there is also no transfer or sharing of electrons. In fact, these bonds form between a hydrogen atom and a highly electronegative atom like oxygen, fluorine, or nitrogen. Importantly, molecules with hydrogen bonding have very high melting and boiling points due to the strength of these forces. These bonds can be found in molecules such as water, alcohol, proteins, DNA, etc. Something to note about hydrogen bonding is that even though it is typically considered to be an intermolecular force, it can also be an intramolecular force, as shown below. While the bonds between the water molecules are intermolecular hydrogen bonds, the bond within the molecule shown to the left is an intramolecular hydrogen bond. Note. The bonds between the oxygen and hydrogen atoms within the water molecule itself are polar covalent bonds. And that's it for today's video. If you found this video to be helpful, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. See you next time.